Hi. So, um, Easter holidays have come and I haven't had any time to do anything. Um, but I thought I'd do a little series of videos on um, kind of my philosophy um, on training, why I train with it, what the alternative approaches are, why I don't train with those. And then what I'll do is, <laughs> I haven't seen my dog all day, can you tell? Um, what I'll do then is another couple of videos explaining like the different, so my philosophy approaching different, um, behavioral and training problems like naggy new dogs so and um, if you've not trained with me before or you've not watched any of my videos um my training philosophy is based around positive reinforcement <laughs> um which basically is a scientific term um which means that we add something positive um that is going to make the behavior occur again in the future so what reinforcement means is that the behaviour, when we positively reinforce behaviour, that behaviour is more likely to occur again in the future. So anything that is reinforced is going to occur more often in the future. The kind of polar opposite of that, I suppose one way of looking at it, is positive punishment. That's where we add something, so positive, to punish a dog to reduce the behaviour. So the terminology is a little bit tricky because punishment doesn't necessarily mean the same as what it means when we would use it kind of day to day. What it means in, in like in the dog training world is that once a behavior is punished, we're less likely to see it again in the future. So um, I train with treats a lot. So I add something, normally something nice, that is going to make the dog do that behavior again in the future. So if a dog comes back to me, I'm going to reward that. So the next time, um, they're more likely to come back to me. Um, and that behaviour then has been positively reinforced. If a dog had um, come back to me, but maybe had come back to me after I'd been yelling them for half an hour, 10 minutes, two minutes, depends on the person, um, and the stress is that that person's under, and um, I shout at them, I've added something horrible and aversive, um, which is gonna make that behavior less likely to occur in the future. So the dogs come back and I've added something each time, um, but one is gonna have a reinforcing effect and one's gonna have a punishing effect. Um, there are loads of reasons that I prefer to train positive reinforcement. Um, one is that this little thing here is like my best bud in the world, aren't you? Um, which is why she's quite so lively because we've been together for about 30 seconds since I got back. Um, and ethically, for me, adding lots of lovely things into her life to make her want to do more for me in the future is a much more ethical place for me to be at. It's going to build up a better relationship between me and my dog. Um, it's going to have a better impact on her welfare overall. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> you're a nutter. Um, just thinking of telling someone how calm my cocker spaniel was the other day. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um, so ethically and from a welfare point of view, I think the positive reinforcement is a much more, um, it, it's just better for our relationships with our dogs. Um, also, a lot of the training that I do with dogs um, is working on problems of, of fear. So maybe they're aggressive because they're fearful or because they've been left alone and they're fearful or they're scared of what someone's going to do. Um, all right, all right. And by adding something aversive to that situation, so for example, if the dog is aggressive and then I shout at them, pull them on a lead, put a choke collar on them and pop them on the collar, um, that's going to add more fear to that situation and it's actually going to be detrimental to the training that I'm trying to do with the dog. So by using my philosophy of adding nice things, what we're doing is we're trying to overcome that emotional response, which is much easier to do and much fairer on the dog and not adding more negativity into a situation where there's already a lot of negativity surrounding it. Um, 
I also think that dogs are keen to work for treats, much more so than they are to avoid punishment. Um, and one of the final reasons that I much prefer to train with positive reinforcement is because what I'm doing in, by using positive reinforcement is I am teaching the dog what I want them to do. So I'm teaching them a choice, so I'm teaching them choice basically. If you choose to sit in this situation and not go mental, I'm gonna give you a lovely stroke. I'm gonna add something that's quite pleasant to the dog. Stroking isn't pleasant for all dogs, but it is for males, um, to encourage this sitting calmly behavior. Um, she has a choice. She can, she's probably going to do it in a minute. She can move away. She can roll on the floor. She can be silly with me again. Um, but if I only add positive reinforcement to her sitting, then she's more likely to sit for me in the future. Yes, like this. Um, I can add tummy tickles in here, which is going to positively reinforce rolling on your back behaviours. Um, and I'm going to see more of that. Um, if I were to punish her now for being a bit silly, which is less than I do when I'm trying to do a video, but you know, it's actually working quite well as a vampire. If I was to punish her, I'm just punishing her for one thing and I'm just suppressing that one behaviour. It's not going to teach her what I want her to do instead, which is to be calm, sit nicely um, and not be silly. It's just going to tell her I'm not so keen on the rolling behaviour. I'm definitely not keen on you going to sniff the camera and making it wobble um, behaviour. It's only suppressing that behaviour, it's not teaching her what a better behaviour would be to do um, instead. And that suppression means that the dogs don't understand. And in some cases, what it can mean is that a behaviour would deteriorate in other, in other areas, mainly because we might have broken down the trust between the dog and the owner, or because... Um, uh, it's a frustration related behavior thank you frustration related behavior um and that frustration is going to come out in a different way so it's really important to understand if you're using a dog trainer what what they prefer to use and why they use it a lot of trainers are now using the terminology balanced um, which basically means that they use both they use positive reinforcement and they use positive punishment um which i think for a dog is almost the worst combination because there's no consistency. Sometimes they're getting a treat and sometimes they're getting an electric shock or sometimes they're getting what they call pressure, um, which could be a whole variety of things. Um, but there's no consistency. At least if they know they're always going to be punished, um, they can have some predictability about their environment. But these balance trainers, it's, they're trying to use like a nice term, but it, what they're doing is it's not great um, for our dogs. So just be aware of what your trainer promotes, why they promote it, and why they feel the need to um, use punishment on, on dogs. Um, it could be that that's how they've been taught and that's kind of how they've always done it. Um, it could be that they don't have the skills, they don't know how to teach um, and change behaviour in a positive reinforcement um, manner. Um, it could be that they've just seen results or it could be that they just like to be quite heavy handed with dogs. Um, and some people are like that, unfortunately. So just bear that in mind. I hope this makes sense. I'm sorry that Millie's been quite so mental, but you know, she's got to be involved, haven't you? Um, post any of your questions below. Um, for those who have more knowledge than I've been through today, I know I've only been through positive reinforcement and positive punishment. Um, there are two other um, ways that we can look at behaviour as well, which are negative reinforcement and negative punishment. Um, but we'll we'll probably cross onto those at some other point. But this video has gone for hours if I talked about all of them um, and the different ways that we can use them. So let's open a discussion. Let's start chatting about these things below. Um, if there's anything that you're you think that you're using <laughs> positive punishment for um, at the moment, and you'd like a positive reinforcement way of um, like how would I deal if a dog did this, or how would I deal if a dog did that, and what behaviours. Um, what training methods would I use? And please post them below because I'd love to start opening more of a discussion on this. Right then, I'm going to go and send my dog. <laughs> Ready, steady, go! <laughs>